इस हार्बर स्कूल में इस तरह से सेटअप लगाए गए हैं जिसमें कि इन बच्चों को पढ़ाया जाता है कि किस तरह से वाटर क्वालिटी को मेंटेन करना है किस तरह से एक एक्वाकल्चर करना चाहिए और किस तरह से हमारे वाटर सिस्टम को ठीक रखा जा सकता है तो ये है हार्बर स्कूल जहाँ पर ये बच्चे सीख रहे हैं कि किस तरह से ये वाटर बॉडीज को सारा चीन रखा जाता है ये यहाँ पे फर्स्ट ईयर बैच के स्टूडेंट हैं और इस तरह से उनको सारा कुछ यहाँ सिस्टम मेंटेन करके उनको सिखाया जाता है कि किस तरह से हमारे एक्टिक सिस्टम को ठीक रखा जा सकता है वाटर क्वालिटी को मेंटेन की जा सकती है है कि वेदर स्टेशन पे इंस्टॉल हो रहा है नया वेदर स्टेशन यहाँ पे पुरानी एक वेदर स्टेशन की खराब हुई है तो इसलिए भी नया वेदर स्टेशन इंस्टॉल होगा जिसका कि डेटा भी ये किया जाएगा यूज़ किया जाएगा जिससे कि डेटा का यूज़ करके ये बच्चे और भी अलग अलग तरीके की एनालिसिस और स्टडीज कर पाएंगे तो इसीलिए आज हम यहाँ आए हैं वेदर स्टेशन इंस्टॉलेशन के लिए यूनिवर्सिटी जो इंडिया में भी तेरह वेदर स्टेशन लगा चुकी हैं So University of Rajasthan and Harvard. Okay, you guys are going to pair up, and uh, and so I want to hear a plan. We are seeing that they are explaining to everyone. All right, so you're going to go there. 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 How many people do you, do you think you need? You don't know yet, right? So you go out there and see? I think we're just gonna have something like Marine Affairs. Marine Affairs, Advocacy and Policy. Right. Okay. Um, welding and Fabrication. Okay. Ocean Engineering. Okay. Uh, so that's four over here. And then in the other building, we have um, Marine Systems Technology. Okay. I need to use the same. Is that? I need to use the same. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Marine Systems Technology. Um, vessel operations, uh, professional scuba diving, and aquaculture. So once they join ninth standard here, ninth grade, mm -hmm. then at which stage they decide? Uh, at the twelfth they grade decide they decide? At the end of ninth grade. In the end of ninth grade. Right. So at that time only they will be then uh, segregated to different uh, yes. I mean, courses. Yes. They still have. <coughs> they still have all their academic classes together. Okay. But their CTE classes. Will be with it with the path. CTE. What is the full form? Career and technical education. Okay, okay. So then they will be then specially only for that special course that they will be segregated. Otherwise, all other subjects are same, common for right. all. Right. Okay. So as a one specialized subject, as an elective, what we call it as. That's exactly, and and that's how it's treated here. That that those are their electives. So, okay. so as an example, yeah. we only offer um, one year of art. Only offer one year of foreign language. Okay. Because all of that extra time goes toward the CTE programs. So, like uh, skilling for both the things, sort of like soft skill as well as technical skills. Right. Well, well, and and the CTE programs hmm. teach both, right? Okay. Both the soft skills and the and the okay and the hard skills. Yeah. <coughs> but you know, but but also soft skills come in the academic classes. Okay. And what is the eligibility criteria? Like uh, to come? Uh, yeah, to join. Regular New York City public high school, mm -hmm. um, unscreened, <clears throat> which means um, students just apply as they would for any other high school. They, okay. uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Um, let me spread my water. Yes. Um, so yeah, there are no. Yeah, please please drink water first. Yeah, there are no special qualifications. They just mm -hmm. apply. Um, mm -hmm. They, you know, students in New York, uh, they rank their high school choices. Okay. Right, first choice, second choice, third choice, and hopefully they get the one that they that they most wanted. Okay. Now this school uh, uh, is uh, now running under the state university. So, it's still a New York City public public school, New York okay. City Department of Education. Okay. Uh, the place where P Tech comes in, that's where the state comes in. in and 
it's complicated because P Tech is um, a, um, I guess it's a state funded program. Okay. But in New York, most of the P Tech schools um, mm. do uh, partner with CUNY schools. Okay. Right, like 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 Bronx. Bronx. Okay. But in our case, because of the the um, alignment, the maritime alignment. The sharing of the infrastructure and other things right. also so can that's, be. that's what connected us with SUNY Maritime. So okay. in our case, we are connected with the state school. Okay. But that doesn't change our sca status as a New York City public school. What about then their career placement and all? Like, are they getting absorbed in some... Because ultimately, these are now the trained workforce. Right, right. Yeah. Well, so <clears throat> um, we have a college and career counselor, uh -huh. right, who... who provides a great deal of that. The CTE teachers provide a great deal of guidance in terms of careers and, and you know, post-secondary education, apprenticeships, straight into careers. Um, the new emphasis on P-TECH, so this is brand, brand new. Right? Oh, so okay. This year, in fact, is a, is a planning year. So okay. P-TECH hasn't even started yet. P-TECH, what is that, full form? I'm sorry? What is that uh, P-TECH, what you are saying? Uh, planning year. Right, so, so, oh, what does it stand for? Oh, full Pathways full in Technology... Education, education okay. cetera, Counseling or something like that, yeah. Career, huh? And it, it, it started out, those programs started out with okay. IBM partnerships. So this is first year of that? Well, this is first year for us. Okay. okay. And that's why I say it's a planning year. Good, so good. So the program won't actually kick off here until okay. 2024. Okay. So we're spending this year figuring out exactly what it's So like. after 12th grade, mm -hmm. these students, when they join for that course, mm -hmm. how many years course that will be again? So P-TECH, it's, it's, not, it's not a definite, right? Some, some schools do it in four years, but typically a P-TECH program is a six-year program, grades 9 through 14. Right? And probably the credit will be getting transferred to certain... Right. Phase. Credit gets transferred, but... But it's not just an extra two years. Okay. So students who are in the P-TECH cohort, mm -hmm. which will be small to begin with, mm -hmm. the plan is that the first year we'll have 25 students yeah. in P-TECH. Mm -hmm. They will start their P-TECH program in ninth grade. Okay. And progress through 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th. So that is like an integrated program. Right. It will be integrated. And in fact, it's still being worked out, but it's, it's likely, I think, that the ninth grade aspect of that will actually be school-wide, even the students who aren't going to do P Tech. Okay. And then in tenth grade, that's when it, when they would focus more intently, intensely on the P Tech protocol as well as their CTE program. So today, when we are in this lab, this lab is specially for what kind of a course? Marine you said biology. Marine biology. Marine biology research. Okay, marine biology research. Mm -hmm. So they are also doing research work at the. Oh, so ninth grade onwards. From tenth grade onwards. Tenth grade onwards. Okay. Right. Mauricio does run mm -hmm. a, a um, an after school program mm -hmm. called Harbor Seals that I believe is open to ninth grade. Okay. Most most of the um, programs in the school offer an after school program so that if a student, for example, chose marine biology but but was also interested in welding, mm -hmm. right? They can they have their program, but they could also do the welding club after school and learn how to weld. Right? Okay. But for the most part, ninth grade um, is you know they have their academics, they can join the clubs, but they don't have their direct interaction with CTE until tenth grade. Is this course also with the internship where they can go to any mm -hmm. uh, place where they can learn from that place while working? Yes. Internship. Yeah. Internships yeah. are a. a part of career and technical education. Okay. So ideally, every student serves at least one internship, right? and they can, that can look like a lot of different things, right? Like many students stay here on Gunners Island and have internships with Billion Oyster Project or Earth Matter or even here in the classroom. Okay. Um, other students leave the island and have um, a central folks who can you know, place students in these internships, but we try to keep it more close to home to where the teacher knows the student best and can say, you know, this, this, is what would, this is the experience that would be most valuable to this student, and then we make that happen. So what is the evaluation method for these students? What, what is the evaluation pattern? Yeah. So 
they all take um, the Regents exams for you know, a standard New York City public high school diploma, Regents diploma. Mm. Um, but they also have, can receive a CTE endorsement on that diploma. Mm -hmm. So for that... Please continue. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so uh, for the CTE endorsement, they have to pass all of their CTE classes. They are required to participate in work-based learning, which can be everything from internships to class speakers and job shadowing and career, career, day, career fairs. Um, and they have to take a, a three-part assessment okay. that is, is different for every CTE program. It's, it's part of the state approval process, so they have to do uh, you know, like a practical portion, a written portion, and a project portion. So passing all of that allows them to have the seal, the CTE seal on their diploma. But when they come for this specialized program, like mm -hmm. suppose in the marine biology, mm -hmm. now for this what we do, are we keeping it more theory based uh, evaluation or practical or how is it? Uh, a mix, a mix of the two. Okay. Um, you know, the, the specifics of that, you would get a better, okay. you'd get a better uh, uh, overview of that from Mauricio. Okay. But um, but yeah, I mean, for him, I think it is a pretty good mix of, of the, you know, the theoretical and the practical. So this course is designed by whom? Who this designed? course is designed yeah. by Mauricio. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So our, our teachers are are um, very much you know sort of the masters of, of their pathway. Right? They they work on the curriculum, bring that together, um, you know, then and then it has to all be approved by New York State. Okay. So we actually just went through the reapproval process for um, five of our eight programs. So it is year. like it is like you submit the curriculum, then there is a state uh, department of education who mm -hmm. approves this curriculum. Correct. Correct. So there's a, okay. there's an external review process where they okay. actually come out and they, and they meet with the teachers and the mm -hmm. counselors okay. and the, the faculty, the, the school leadership, and me and. and so it's like a verification process where they see whether we are completely equipped to run this course. Yes, correct. Okay. Correct. So we, we did just we did just do that process okay. last um, spring okay. for five of the eight programs and a, an initial approval program for a sixth of those eight. Okay. So we're, we're just now getting the results back and they've been good. So. Wow, very good. Because uh, such specialized schools are very much important today. Mm -hmm. And the way now also when I came from this harbor, I see a lot of pollution in the water body. Yep. A lot of plastic pollution, drainage release and mm -hmm. all these. So if any of the batch of the school, uh, the students, those who have completed our course, mm -hmm. maybe after the grade 12, uh, did they come back as showing interest that they want to get into these kind of activities of uh, environmental interest and uh, cleaning? Yeah. yeah, I think there is, I mean, in a general sense, yeah. yes, in a lot of different ways, in, yeah. a, in a more specific local sense. Um, we have, um, so at Billion Oyster Project, which is our nonprofit partner yeah. here on the island, um, out of the 50 employees, I believe um, seven or eight of them are harbor school graduates. Oh. So many of the students kind of go out in the world and then come back and are hired by the Nursery Project okay. to do their environmental education work. What are the other such projects? The, this I have heard Billion Oyster project I saw mm -hmm. and uh, it's very well designed and it's very well kept for in even exhibit or a person to understand what is this Billion Oyster project. Is there any other such projects? Or sure. Oh yeah, yeah. No, lots. Um, I mean everything from, I, I mentioned Earth Matter as, mm -hmm. a, um, as a possible uh, internship mm -hmm. site. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're here on Governors Island. They do Composting and uh, zero waste, um, you know, sorting and, and okay. a lot of stuff like that. So they're they're actually a great partner as well. We give them interns. Um, we have had graduates work with them as well. So, so it, that's, that's it, sort of the close to home part. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, but we have had students also go out and work for uh, you know Sea Shepherd and, and you know act like sort of well well known environmental projects. Projects. Uh, actually, I had been to one of the water resource uh, recovery facility, mm -hmm. which is of New York in the Wads Island. Okay. Now, I wish, I'm suggesting, 
if our students can conduct a regular monitoring and study because mm -hmm. that is a kind of a collaboration which can happen with that department yeah. so because i saw a lot of pollution in that area because of the you can understand the gases which are being sure. released out of it yeah. at the same time the if we are monitoring it properly then the that uh, system will run properly this time i went and i saw a lot of places where maybe there is system is not properly running and that's why at every stage i could see the again pollution then there were a lot of bird birds who were sitting in that place bird shits and all that pollution again so i feel this kind of a collaboration also will be very much impactful and students can get involved with the department Mm -hmm. uh, so that you know the chances of uh, um, getting absorbed mm -hmm. in those uh, jobs or maybe becoming a consultant to such all things the chances of students become more yes and today uh, actually across the globe there is major issue of water pollution yep. from whichever water body we say so i think this is also very important uh, way that we can collaborate in every uh, different kind of these governments uh, like suppose it's about the waste management now yet there is no uh, segregation at source mm -hmm. so once we will be doing segregation at source whether it is for the waste water or for the garbage mm -hmm. i think most of the things our school can easily handle and most of the places i saw that it's like a tidal water in every river of us mm -hmm. so opportunities are more for the students to uh, remain involved during their uh, teaching learning period and uh, with this i think we are creating a sense of commitment sense mm -hmm. of responsibility absolutely yeah and I, i think and i would want mauricio to, to actually explain this part but you know the, he has a um, uh, you didn't see it because we had to walk past the big uh, water flood out there okay. but out by the road there's a there's a cage that's full of trash oh. that his students have yeah i saw from, while entering so yeah it comes yeah. from the rip rap around oh. the island yeah and they bring it in they put it in there as as sort of as, as an exhibit right to show all of these things came out of of the water right here on governor's island yeah and they do i know mauricio's class does a lot of water quality testing as well yeah. they go they get on our boats and go around the harbor and do water quality testing yeah another thing mike when i was going through the 2014 report of new york water bodies mm -hmm. it's it's very uh, specifically mentioned in that report that unless new york does identification of the zero order streams mm -hmm. or the places where uh, the uh, like we call it as source and non point sources where the pollution happening Uh, till that time the mm -hmm. water bodies cannot be cleaned and that's a, at a very urgent level that that has to be done so i think our, our harbor school is it only focusing on uh, this uh, brackish water or even for the river riverine thing well i mean uh, there's a lot of local photo because our water is brackish a lot of the focus locally is on that mm -hmm. but but that's not the only thing that's being studied okay so i and i do know that um like the uh, combined sewage overflow is a, is a huge problem yeah. in New York Harbor. Right? Uh -huh. Anytime there's a quarter of an inch of rain, yeah. the, you know, the, basically the toilets overflow into the, into the river. Yes, uh, that and, I uh, saw even in the harbor area, yeah. the drainage is mm -hmm. open, discharge is happening directly right. and, at and many like, places. So like, as you know, we have a scuba diving yeah. pathway. Yeah. Right? Our students, anytime there's more than a quarter of an inch of rain, mm -hmm. the students can't dive for 72 hours. Okay. For safety, right? Uh -huh. So that really sort of brings home how serious it is. another another just don't take it otherwise because mm -hmm. last time when i came to see this uh, oyster project mm -hmm. and i saw those hatcheries uh, sorry the cage which are uh, you know submerged in the water uh, because we are growing the oysters mm -hmm. but uh, when we take out those cages we found almost 60% of the oysters are dead mm -hmm. reason is only because there is total pollution in this water body mm -hmm. because i could see the drainage opening then all these our um, this um, ships and all boats and all uh, plying and lot of uh, pollution in the water body 
and but still we are trying to project this uh, billion oyster project as a like a protection measure or a safety measure from the pollution but ultimately when we are doing this mostly we find the mortality rate is very high mm -hmm. so i think that there needs to be little some change which needs to be done mm -hmm. because otherwise when we are doing this uh, culturing of the oysters uh, but then uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, dead animals then mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and this would be great. I would love to have you have this conversation with some of our yes. project partners. Yes, yes, that you know, is I'm what not, I want. I'm not a scientist, uh, but you know, today I, I want. I in fact, I want it today. Mortality rate mm -hmm. is very high. Yeah, right? and you know, like like to the point where you said sixty percent, and I'm not yeah. at all surprised. Uh, right? I think. I mean, the key sort of is what that, that other forty percent is doing. Because the cage, when it was open, that day itself, I said to Emily, who was mm -hmm. there with us, I said that uh, we are trying to do this as a measure of controlling pollution. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, our own uh, those animals are getting polluted, right. and they are dying. Right. So our project's objective is not getting completely achieved. Right. And if we have to achieve, means we have to, you know, the mortality rate we have to reduce. And for that, the area where we are putting these uh, cages. Some bioremediation or some measures we have to do continuously, and we have to look at that how that areas can be completely uh, the remediation can be done and oysters can live. Right. Yeah. Because once they are adult form, they don't die so soon because they are the hardy animals. Right. So in that manner, that we have to look at some kind of a measures where. Uh, things uh, our projects needs to be little uh, modified or mm -hmm. uh, we have to do certain kind of enrichment in that so that uh, uh, properly that project can be you know projected very well yeah and i think i think that to an, to an extent yeah. you know these oysters are dying so that other ones can live right they're they're filtering yes. until they yes. can't anymore and they yeah. do die but you know hopefully there is still a, a positive yes, outcome yes. Yeah, yeah. Not for those oysters, so, so, but, but for the you know, yeah. for the environment as a whole. So I, I I wanted to speak to few of them, those who are mainly handling this uh, billion mm -hmm. oyster project. Yeah, we can definitely. So we can discuss, and sure. then you know, because my intention, being a Fulbright scholar, to get involved in such kind of an important projects here, mm -hmm. and whatever expertise I have or whatever they have, I can we can have a sharing of thoughts and ideas, mm -hmm. by which a lot of things we can do it together. So I mean, um, I will that. also Just give so you my card. So we can get, get in touch by sure, you. Sure. If you email me. All right, so I will do that. I will do that. And in fact, that. ideally, yeah. if you email me and just like with a paragraph about what you're just like Good, yeah. I can yeah. definitely make connections yeah. for you. Sure, sure. About, about sure, because everything has a scope of improvement mm -hmm. and uh, we have to do it with the right way of doing things because today it is very, very important to understand at the microbial level also that how the microbial climate also we have to create by which these uh, we, we can get the help of the bioremediation and the animals can flourish they can you know they can do the job for which we are putting them in this way or we right. are doing this project yeah and, and you know what BOP says you know says you know education through restoration restoration through education yes, right? yes, so, yes. you know it's a circle absolutely right, so absolutely the, the 